The contradictory of the conditional is probably the least intuitive of all the contradictory forms that we'll look at. Well, we've already discussed this topic when we introduced the conditional and presented the truth table for the conditional, so this should be review. Here's a conditional. If I pay for dinner, then you'll pay for drinks. What does it mean to say that this conditional claim is false? When we first introduced the conditional, we looked at this question. We determined that the only condition under which we would certainly agree that this claim is false is when the antecedent is true, but the consequent is false. This gives us the form for the contradictory. The most natural way to say it is, I pay for dinner, but you don't pay for drinks. I'm affirming the antecedent and denying the consequent. Recall from our discussion of the conjunction that but just means and, and that this is a conjunction, not a conditional. Let me repeat that. The contradictory of a conditional is not itself a conditional, it's a conjunction. Here's the general rule that makes this clear. The contradictory of a conditional is a conjunction that affirms the antecedent of the conditional but denies the consequent. Almost always, though, it's more natural to phrase the contradictory as A but not B, as in I pay for dinner but you don't pay for drinks. The most common mistake that students make when solving problems that require taking the contradictory of a conditional is to interpret the contradictory as a conditional of this form. If A, then not B. This is a tempting interpretation of the contradictory, but it just doesn't work. There are a couple of ways of seeing why this is so. One way uses truth tables. On the left is the truth table for the conditional. The conditional is true for all truth values of A and B, except when A is true and B is false. The contradictory of the conditional is, by definition, a claim that is true whenever the conditional is false, and vice versa. So the middle column has the opposite truth value of the conditional for the same values of A and B. This, we know, must be the truth table for the contradictory of the conditional. The question is, what operations on A and B will yield this truth table? That's the question represented by the question mark in between A and B. We can see right away that a truth table formed by simply negating the consequent won't do. Here's the truth table for the conditional where the only change is negating the consequent. As you can see, I've switched the truth values in the B column, and I've evaluated the truth value of the conditional in the middle column according to the rule that the conditional as a whole is true except when A is true and B is false. You can see that the truth values for this new conditional don't match up with the truth values for the contradictory of the conditional. They match for the cases where A is true, but not where A is false. From this alone, we can rule this out as a candidate for the contradictory. Whatever functions as the contradictory of the conditional has to be more restrictive in its truth value so that it comes out false whenever A is false. Now let's look at the truth table for the conjunction with B negated. As you can see, this gives us exactly what we need. The truth tables match. What we've just done confirms our rule, that the contradictory of a conditional is a conjunction with the B term negated. Well, this is the end of part three of this video course. For the sake of having them all in one place, here are the formulas we introduced that give the contradictories for the basic compound claims of propositional logic.